<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our PAX Online coverage here on Dual Screens. That's YouTube.com slash Dual Screens TV. I am Stephen Fontana. I'm here, here with Andy Asimakis, as you know, because he's my partner in crime, and we do these things together. And we are here with Shiro Games' Adrian Briata. Uh, we're here to talk about Darksburg, which Andy and I have not gotten our hands on since PAX East 2019. So we have so many questions. Adrian, how are you? Pretty good. How are you? We're hanging in there, man. This PAX Online has been a trip. This has been crazy. H how has it been going for you guys? Uh, well, it's a bit weird because uh, we're used to uh, to you know the fusion and uh, the activity of, uh, of a show floor, and now we're at home. <laughs> and we're in France, so most of the appointments are pretty late in the evening. Yeah, that's uh, we, we actually had an interview... I think it was yesterday where it, the people were in Russia and they kind of screwed up the time zones and it was four in the morning for them. <laughs> and it was, yeah, that was, that was fun for us. Yeah. They, they sounded like they did not want to be there, but uh, <laughs> yeah. they still, they powered through. I was like, you guys sound like you've been exhausted for the last how many hours. And I felt bad. Just like, can you give me some more information about your game? But you want to go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, we'll be doing a written interview with them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Adrian, why don't you tell our listeners who don't know what Darksburg is, what is Darksburg? Uh, actually, it's going to be useful for you because when you saw, lastly, the game, uh, it was, an, if I could remember correctly, it was a, a survival game, a type of a Left 4 Dead. Am I mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah. so uh, today, Darksburg is a roguelite, a cooperative roguelite. Uh, in which you, you must escape a procedural generated city uh, that has been invaded by, uh, well, by, by zombies. You, you fight alongside one to uh, three friends, so a group of four uh, at, uh, at maximum. And uh, the objective is to, um, well, finish the, the cleaning of the city. Mm. So you need to reach the end of each level and uh, fight bosses um, because it's randomly generated. You get a lot of different um, puzzles and uh, and uh, new enemies to fight that are changing um, each time you start a new run. Um, the the small events that are uh, during your path are also changing. Uh, the loot is changing. Um, the abilities that you unlock is changing a bit, like in uh, the the weapons, you know, in mm -hmm. a classical. Uh, roguelike game, like in a Dead Cells, you find different weapons and then you adapt your build to the weapon. This is basically uh, the same thing, except that it's abilities. You uh, unlock uh, different abilities, you choose between a set of three abilities, and then you uh, you adapt your uh, your build depending on what you ch you chose, depending on what your uh, your friend uh, or friends chose. So, so you can kind of like mix now. and match and, and, you know, see how the, all these abilities kind of mix and, and meld into each other. Uh, it sounds like it's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, it sounds like it has high replayability. Um, so you guys went into early access in February of this year, but I want to talk yep. about, so you said the last time we saw it, it was, it was one style game and now it's kind of shifted to a different style. Can you talk about what happened in between there that made you guys make those decisions? Was it, Definitely, yeah. was that made after early access? Was that made, you know, in between packs and early access? When did those kind of decisions be, uh, get made? Um, so when we released Interlake in, in early access, we had uh, we tried several modes. We did a, a mostly silent early access uh, because we wanted to try as many things as possible uh, mm -hmm. to be sure that the game, when shipped, would be uh, as players would like it. So we released uh, in early access with three different game modes, uh, which were a fight the waves when you had uh, like 20 or so uh, different waves of zombies coming at you and you had to, uh, to, to survive as long as possible. You had a classical Left 4 Dead mode, uh, game mode, where you had to go from point A to point B in a uh, already designed, uh, level designed uh, level uh, or district. Mm. And you had a PvP mode, uh, 4 versus 4, where you could play the Revenants and... Uh, so everything went pretty fine. People were quite happy, but there was uh, this, uh, you know, 
time length and uh, a replay value that was a bit missing. And uh, and after a couple of hours, people uh, were already starting to to feel like playing was uh, a bit the same experience uh, one game oh, after gotcha. the other. Okay. So what we did is we started working on a uh, the possibility of doing this procedural generation thing where people would have to uh, find their way but like literally uh, you cannot learn your the the the, the, the district uh, because it's always changing and uh, small adjustments uh, bringing other small adjustments and ideas, bringing new ideas, we ended up doing something that looked a lot like a roguelike. In the end, we were like, okay, let's call it a roguelike, because in the end, it's one. So it was more of a... Um, it's kind of evolved. You know, it kind of just kind of yeah. snowballed and kind of evolved into this, this you know, amalgamation of different different aspects that you were taking that people liked and getting rid of things that people didn't like and i mean that that's kind of that's what early access is all about right like that that's the exactly. reason why that, developers that's do already that. uh, that, that's already what we did with uh, with nose guard our other game um when, when it went into early access we we had the, those plans you know that were already very clear for us and when the community came in took the game tried out loved it but said okay no the story can wait let's please put multiplayer first so we worked on that and uh, we pretty much did the same with Darksburg. we had plans uh, we shifted a bit the order of what we wanted to put first in the development and the procedural generation came came way first actually um so it was pretty natural and uh, we've always worked and loved to work with the community so that wasn't really a surprise or something new for us. Mm. I am I'm really stuck on this whole randomly uh, generated abilities portion of the game. That to me is really exciting because when you made you made the dead cells comparison, it's easy for a similar game to take let's say weapons with different stat buffs, but they look alike in a sense. But how do you go about crafting so many unique abilities, and how many can we expect per character? So there are 50, uh, 50 unique abilities, imp- unique ability improvements uh, per character. So you basically have four abilities, you know, like in a MOBA. Uh, you actually use the uh, QWER to, uh, mm-hmm. to use them. And for each uh, ability, you have certain paths that you can choose to go uh, from one to the other. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and those paths are um, randomized and put into the game. So each time you reach a new level, you get the possibility to improve one ability, but you don't know which one and in which uh, order. You get three. Ch- in, in each time you you earn a new, you complete a new level. Uh, no, you gain enough experience to reach the new level. You get the choice between three different abilities. Uh, I don't know if you play Runolf. Let's say you have uh, the possibility of boosting the potions that you throw at your allies, and uh, or the possibility of boosting your ladle strike, or uh, uh, an ability that allow you to run faster, or uh, and you have to choose between those three abilities. So what's the what's interesting in, in this is basically that because you will have those th- three choices. And your friends will have those three, those three choices, and because the game is pretty much exigent and difficult in terms of uh, skill cap, uh, coming uh, to a certain difficulty level, you need to boost to to work on your your group strategy to optimize the build uh, of the whole group, and um, to say okay, so uh, we are clearly lacking. Um, support abilities or crowd control abilities so i'm going to take that but you focus on dps because if we have a big uh, boss to fight we need to have the the dps um, the dps count coming out mm. Mm. is it clear enough yeah oh yeah, yeah. very so, clear so and uh, it it gets me so excited to hear you describe it does, does okay, everybody cool. so so the whole party has to ch- chooses between the same pool of, of abilities or each individual character gets three randomized abilities they could choose from 
Each character has its own okay. ability pool. Okay. They have uh, well perks pool. We call we call them perks. Um, but um, the um, the experience bar is uh, common for all the team. It's a team experience. Oh, uh, bar. interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so really you neat. level up. Yeah, because you level up at the same time, and you have to 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 make your choice at the same time. This is like really taking a lot of cool ideas from us for so many games like this reminds me of kind of like um uh call of duty zombies a little bit where you're kind of pooling your money to try and unlock doors to get to the next thing or, or to like get the uh, get a cool weapon or something like that but also it reminds me of like a diablo-esque vermintide i don't know if you guys that is, that is a good connection yeah yeah like, like yeah. vermintide is all about you know wave survival and and working as a team and but it's like left for dead except you know warhammer essentially um and i gotta say this makes me sort of not care about diablo 4 a little bit less <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean this this is this got a lot of really cool ideas but i i guess you know what my when my biggest question is what kind of difficulties are you ha- like? It seems like you're doing a lot of balancing on the fly. Can you explain or or the process between or the the process in which you are balancing all of these different mechanics to kind of meld them together into like one cohesive thing? Because it sounds like, to be quite frank, it sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like something like being able to balance the level design, keeping things interesting there, but also balancing, um, you know, making sure that you're not getting giving one character abilities that they may not be able to use or they're not good with, or maybe, you know, how do you balance all of that to kind of make a interesting, but also fair gameplay? That's the, that's the real beauty of early access that we have. Uh, we have a pool of players that we work with uh, daily. Uh, we send them. So we, we have different groups. We have the, the, the early access group, which is a bit larger. And then we have the council, what we call the council. It's a group of uh, 30 to 40 players that, that play a lot of the game. And we usually uh, send them uh, the, the updates after what we think is a pretty good balancing. Uh, they try it out. They give us feedback. And then we, adju- we adjust uh, the game depending on the feedback. And then we put it out there into the early, the early access pool. Mm-hmm. Then we get the feedback of the early access pool. And then we finally have something pretty much balanced. Uh, at the end of the road, wow. but th- that awesome. was the process in the last nine months. It's incredible. So, when, yeah. when are you guys thinking of uh, getting out of early access, and when do you think you're going to have a finished product on this? Oh, on Wednesday. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, se- September <laughs> September twenty third. That's uh, wow. wow. Awesome. We've asked that question a lot of people. Like, when is the game coming out? Kind of thing. It's like you. We're really fast on that, and it's right around the corner. That's, that's incredible. No, that, that's awesome. that's mainly why we're at PAX. It's like we to 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 have the word out that we're we are launching in a couple of days. Awesome. Well, to wrap up here, why don't you tell everybody where they can get it, where they can follow everything, and then and then we'll uh, we'll let you get on get on with making this thing ready to go. Um, well, the game will be available on Steam at first. We have plans of of course for uh, for consoles, but. Um, Steam is important for us because we need to to make sure that the game is uh, is coherent and that people uh, people will like it. Um, so it comes out on Wednesday, uh, uh, September twenty third, and uh, you can follow you know Shiro Games Twitter account, um, YouTube account, Facebook accounts. They, 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 we are we are pretty much everywhere. Uh, if you want to have any insights or news about the game. Awesome, man. Adrian, thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes. And listeners, sick. <laughs> listeners, keep it tuned right here to youtube.com slash TV for more PAX online coverage. Thank you so much. And as always, please be excellent to each other. <laughs>